Hey guys, what's going on? So in today's video, I'm going to be walking you through how to dockerize one of your Python Flask applications. So if you remember in one of the previous videos, we built a machine learning model around text mining using something called TF-IDF. So the code for the most part is pretty much the same. So we're not going to be dealing with this code too much. What we are going to be doing with is, is we're going to be dealing with something called a Docker file, which is this. As I move this over, what a Docker file does is it'll actually give some instructions to the Docker container to, to basically tell it what to install, what packages and dependencies to install, and then what command it's supposed to be running after that. The whole purpose of a container, there's so many different videos on containers, so I'm not gonna go into too much depth, but the whole purpose of a container is it allows you to isolate your environment so that if you have specific requirements or specific modules that are within that container, you don't have to worry about version control for your modules, in which case it may actually break your code. Now, one of the things that I also like to do, though not always necessary in a Dockerized container, is still go ahead and run it in a virtual environment. And you may ask, well, why would you run a virtual environment within a Docker container if the purpose of both of them is to isolate your environment? You may have a scenario where you actually may need to create two different Docker containers off of the same image, yet those two different Docker containers may have different requirements. So for example, I may have half of my module run in one specific Docker container that used TensorFlow 1.4, and then I may have the other half of my module or, or another module or add-on module or something like that or another application that's going to run in TensorFlow 2.0. That could be one of the use cases. I always find that it's sometimes best practice to use a virtual machine, but you really don't have to in this case. So what this Docker file does is I'm going ahead and saying, let's go ahead and call Python 3.7. Let's put in, let's put this all in a virtual environment. Within the actual container, I'm launching a new folder called app. And in this case, I'm basically saying, take all of the file contents within this folder and move it into the folder app. Then we're gonna go ahead and run our requirements.txt and then we're gonna run the command python app.py. So let's go ahead and build a Docker container in terminal. So all I do is I open up a terminal application and I'm gonna make this bigger just for the sake of clarity here. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and CD into this environment. So I'm just gonna hit CD, which means change directory go ahead and drag this templates folder and this is the file that I want. So when I ls into this, I just have my four files and that's exactly what I'm looking for. So first and foremost, we need to make sure that we have Docker installed. And if you don't have Docker installed, just go to Google, type in Docker, and you will find the installation instructions for your operating system. It's really, really straightforward. For Mac and Windows, I believe they have an actual GUI application that you can install. If you are on uh, Linux, like Ubuntu or something like that, you can actually do it through command line. So to make sure we have Docker running, I'm gonna go ahead and type Docker. And this tells me that Docker is running in fact because it gives me all of the background commands under Docker. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and see if I have any images. I'm gonna go over the concept of images, containers in just a second. But as you can see, I have two pre-compiled images in here. One is Python and one is Nginx. And I'm not gonna be using Nginx in this one, I'm just gonna be using the Python one. And where that Python module really comes from, where it says Python 3.7, that's me calling in my Docker file saying that, hey, listen, I actually need the Python 3.7 package installed in my Docker file. I'm not using Nginx, so I don't need it in this case. And so what it does is it goes on to the Docker repo, which is at hub.docker.com, and it'll go ahead and download that repo for you. Now, the other thing is I do have this image installed, but I need to generate an image from all of this. So all of this code over here still needs to create its own image. And what that image is going to do is it's going to give me a few things. It's going to give me an instance of Python. It's going to give me an instance of a virtual environment, and it's going to install all of my dependencies all within that one container. And the whole purpose behind a container is I can actually run that container on a Mac. I can then export it out into a tar file, go into a Linux or, or Windows environment. I can then import it as a tar file and then just run that container as is without having to, having to worry about any kind of dependencies or whether it's going to run here or not. It's basically agnostic to platform. So it'll run in Windows, Mac, Linux, you name it. So in order to actually generate or create our first Docker image, first, we're going to go ahead and we're going to say Docker build. And here I'm going to give it basically a title. I'm going to call it Doc app. And we'll say something like version one, that's a tag. And basically I'm telling it to look for the existing folder that it's in for that Docker file. So when I do this, now it's gonna do is it's gonna say, okay, I already have the Python application. Now I'm gonna install all the modules that I need for the virtual environment. It's gonna do that. Now it's gonna generate my working directory, install all my requirements, and then I'm gonna have an image that I can do something with. 
So we're gonna give this a second to run. It shouldn't take too much longer, but there's a few different requirements within here that I'm actually using. And now we're done. So now when I go to Docker images, what you'll notice is I actually have my doc app version one. I have Python version 3.7. And again, I'm not using Nginx. So now I have everything within doc app that I actually need. So now the question is, how do I go ahead and create a container? And again, the container is basically going to be an instance of this image where it's going to take everything that is in that Python file, that app.py file, that Flask application, essentially. As soon as I turn on the container, that environment is going to be ready for me to go into. So I can actually go to 127.0.0.1 and then port 5000, and it'll actually bring up my application. If I shut the container, it'll actually take down my application. And the whole purpose behind containerizing things is that so I'm not consistently using resources and I don't have my application running 24 seven, otherwise it's gonna be using CPU usage, RAM and all that other kind of stuff. So that is the beauty behind a container. All right, so now for me to go ahead and create my Docker container, I'm gonna write in Docker container run tack D. And basically what that means is D means that I'm gonna detach this from my Python terminal or from my terminal in this case, and I'm gonna be able to run it in the background. And I'm going to be running it on my local host 5000 in my port or in my uh, Docker container, sorry, 5000. We called it doc app version one. And so basically this gives you an ID for it. Now, the other thing that I want to, I want to show you is there's actually this tool called Kinematic, which you can download it off of uh, the Docker website as well. I'm going to let it open here right now. And what this does is I'm going to close that because that's probably an old one. What this does is it'll go ahead and show you the container that's been created. So this container is called elegant. I don't even want to pronounce that elegant something, but if I want to confirm that that is the Docker container that I just created, I can say Docker container LS and it'll actually say that this is the same one. It was created 34 seconds ago, which is what we created. So you don't have to use this application here, but this is a good way for you to start and stop your Docker container. You can do it from here as well. Just say Docker stop and then the Docker container name or Docker start. So let me show you how this works. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and stop this container for now. So let's stop it. It's so stopping so that it's stopped. I'm gonna go ahead and bring over a terminal. And in this terminal, I'm just gonna hit turn. So 127.0.0.1 is where the application is hosted. So what happens in this case is when I'm not using my application and I don't need it on a 24 hour basis, I put it in a container and I can shut the container off because I don't want to be using the RAM and CPU usage. I could be dedicated back to some other kind of application. Now let's say that the application, I want to actually be able to go in and use it. The, another an example of this could be say, for example, like a mortgage application. If you're a financial advisor or somebody at a bank, you don't necessarily need to have that application open 24 seven. You may only want to have it open when you need it. And I already start the container, not to say that we're going to tell them to start and stop containers, but there's a way to do this in the background. But now that you see that this container is actually running, I can go ahead in here and now my application starts. And so I can put in something like this is a great website and you can say, I like to browse websites. Hit submit. There you go. Your cosine similarity is like roughly 26%. And now, if I hit enter, you see the application starts back up. As soon as I hit stop, the application stops and so does any resources against it. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. This is how you very simply containerize an application. This process can get a lot more complicated if you really want it to be. Um, in practice, you know, this is, I'm running the development server off of my local host. In practice, obviously containerization is a little bit more complicated, but just to get you guys set up, if you wanted to run this on a local host, this is one of the ways to do it. So hopefully you liked this video. And if you did, please consider liking and subscribing. And I will see you next time. Thanks very much. Bye.